Oh, wall tap. Shite. Oh, God. Okay, first of all, whatever I'm telling you, do not rely on it as fact at all. I'm just a guy spewing facts that I'm going to say are 90% incorrect. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode one of For the Toge, a series in which I take you with me to figure out what's going to be my main car when I race in the Toge. Now, what better way to begin the series than to start with the legendary Toyota AE86. At first, this car doesn't seem like much, but, well, actually, it's not much at all. If you were to look at this car on paper, you would think that anybody who admires this car is out of their damn mind. You're talking about uh, mid to late 80s, Japanese, almost like a family car. It's a consumer car. It's a hatchback. It's only got a, a 1.6 liter engine. It makes uh, 25 wheel horsepower, but it weighs almost nothing. It weighs less than a ton. You know, we're talking small sports car weights. Think Miatas, think MGs, think K cars. And that's essentially what you're getting with this car. Now, it didn't have remarkable suspension. In fact, the rear essentially had no suspension at all. Um, it had no power. It, uh, by all accounts, isn't the most pretty of looking cars. But the thing about this car was that it was perfect for the mountain roads. It was super light, it was super agile, it wasn't overpowered at all. In fact, it was one of those cars that kind of welcomed you to push it as hard as you could. It was essentially because of this car that drifting even became a thing. But mountain roads aside, this car still gave Toyota racing pedigree with cars that were in Group A or Group N racing or rally racing or even in touring car championships. Fast forward 35 years later and the car is still a cult classic. If not, I would even dare to say mainstream classic. If you like Japanese cars, if you like car culture, you've heard of this car at least, the AE86. Alright, so this is how it's going to go. Each car I test, I'm going to do five laps. And in those five laps, I should get a pretty decent feel for the car. Of course, if you're going to be taking this seriously, you'd want to spend more than five laps. In fact, you'd probably want to put dozens and dozens of hours before you pick what your main car is. But for the sake of this series, I'm going to do five laps in each car. And I'm going to compare them with um, the, what I think the pros and the cons are. I'll go kind of go through them with you guys. And I'm going to compare them to my lap times. Now, lap times will obviously have a heavy effect on uh, what I think should be my main car, but also maybe there's something I feel like a car has certain potentials or something like that. So let's get going. Here we go. All right, so let me tell you guys how I came across and how I got to know about the AE86 or the Toyota Troino or if you're here in the North American market the Toyota Corolla SR5s and GTSs well the first thing was um, I watched a little show you guys might have heard of called Initial D when I was in high school it was super popular the arcade games were out. We still had an arcade in my city. And that's kind of where us, uh, you know, us nerds and uh, car enthusiasts started hanging out was at the local arcade, right? We'd be playing um, old games at the time. Outrun, we'd be playing... Oh, crap. We'd be playing Initial D, Arcade Stage uh, 3 is what we had. We were playing... Wangan Midnight, Maximum Tune. Um, and then we were just starting to get our licenses at that time, right? So, um, coming from a world when I was younger of you know, rollerblades, roller hockey, skateboarding, BMX, that kind of stuff, um, getting into cars was, in auto sports, was kind of like a natural progression as I see it. But it wasn't Initial D that, you know, got me into cars. I had grown up with 
with cars as a child. Um, you know, having NASCAR on the family TV on the weekends was not unusual. Um, so I had, I had grown up all about that kind of stuff. I had learned about what like split times were um, when I was still young. You know, so. But it was just kind of uh, the perfect time, the perfect combination of things to come through when initial D hit. And of course, if you guys have actually watched the series, I don't know, some of you guys might think it's terrible or whatever, but I quite enjoy it. I think, you know, it, it's a typical anime flair on a, on a genre that I quite like, on a topic that I quite like. And then, uh, Initial D eventually led into the discovery of hot version videos and all the rest of that stuff. And, you know, um, drifting wasn't really a popular thing in, uh, in North America yet. Um, I think pro, pro drifting has only been around in North America since 2003 or something like that. Where the D1GP has, has been older than that. And then, of course, like, Tokyo racing in Japan has been longer than that, right? And then, from then, I actually owned a 1987 Toyota Corolla GTS, which is an AE86, just the uh, North American market version of it. And so, um, you know, I'm not maybe one of those guys who just loves the tofu delivery machine because of the Michelin, but I, I was actually one of the, you know, handful or whatever of lucky people that have actually had the pleasure of owning one I eventually did crash that car at um, my local racetrack during one of our drift days which sucks I love that car so much but it is what it is that's the only car I've ever put into a wall on a big uh, banked turn and it, I did it in such a stupid way I just it was really raining that day and I just really hydroplaned into it with a, a good friend of mine in the passenger seat at the time who wanted to go for a drive and I, it was just dumb. Just trying to show off and very stupid of me. I miss that car though. It was uh, bone stock though with the exceptions of uh, it had a front strut bar. Uh, tower bar and then um, had racing I think it was racing beat headers exhaust headers and uh, it was gutted completely gutted but taking that thing out and listening to uh, I guess it's uh, Toyota's VVT was it VVT? variable valve time when that thing opened up after like 7000 RPMs it sounded so damn good. And you guys can kind of get the um, the sound of it in this car. I'm not sure if they're using the proper sound from the stock um, version of this car in this sound, or if this is from um, an upgraded version. But you guys can kind of get a, an idea of what I'm talking about there, right? So that was quite a bit quicker than our first lap through there. So it's going a little bit, oh, that was a little shallow. I should have waited a little bit for a little bit of a later apex. There we go. Break it here, try and hit a later apex. We really just put our foot down and power through. Coming up on the final corner. That's quite slow. Better than last time when we spun. Hey, in a 558 right there. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, guys, what's going on? Editor Phil here. I realized at the end of that video, I didn't really, uh, I didn't really have an outro for how I was going to end that. So. Here uh, are a breakdown of my lap times. So lap one, I did it in a miserable six minutes, 17 seconds. Lap two, I got a five, five, eight. Uh, lap three was just over six minutes, 
Lap four was a 5.59, so my best time was on my second lap at five minutes, 58 seconds and 7.70. And on the fifth lap, I ended up spinning and I just didn't even finish the lap. So um, I didn't bother recording that down. And then my average time for using the bone stock 8.6 on Akina downhill is six minutes, four seconds and nine tenths. So not great for all the people out there that frequently do toge runs or run on the keener or something you'd be laughing at me thinking if you watch this far in the video why the hell am i watching your video i'll get better i'm just starting just stick with me please so then now let's quickly go through the pros and cons of what i think currently are of using the ae86 going forward so let's start with the pros obviously it's a very lightweight car so it's very nimble um it's easy to handle ish i mean you don't have to really worry about oversteer and that kind of stuff which is nice uh it's a uh, any engine so it's very responsive you don't have to worry about having to keep revs up or uh, boost and stuff like that i mean you do still have to worry about getting keeping your revs up because that's where all the power is in this car but uh yeah it's still responsive like all naturally aspirated engines and it's great to learn lines and techniques with because you're not going to go super fast at the start. You can really focus on using your technique as a driver to make you faster. Now, some people might say this is a con because uh, the difficulty of the car, that's actually going to make it rise. But um, getting solid foundations of what it is to be a driver um, works for me to be more of a pro. I'd rather have that hammered into my brain and my muscle memory than to be able to make up time lost on straight sections or something like that. And the last one is purely kind of cosmetic or um, superficial in that even in the game, I think it still sounds good. So obviously if you're gonna be driving a car for hours and hours on end, you wanna be listening to a car that you think is appealing to your ears and that you wouldn't mind listening to. All right. so. With that out of the way, let's jump into the cons now. What are the cons, I think, of running the AE86 as a main? Well, there's just no power to the car. It's gutless, right? Um, and so I was like, like I was saying before, it could be a big turnoff for, for people that, um, you know, just wanna hammer the throttle and just take off in straight lines and don't really care about cornering or something like that. But obviously, if that's the kind of driver you are, the toge is not for you anyways. Uh, another con is it's very unforgiving. If you're not carrying the proper momentum through the course using the proper line, you're not going to have a good time um, because you can't be making those times up in other places. Um, you you, you kind of have to hit everything perfectly if you want to compete with some of the more powerful cars out there. Um, but given that it's on the downhill, um it's a little bit easier but still very unforgiving so get ready to have a lot of frustration if you're going to main this car right um limited tuning if you go into the tuning options if you guys are familiar with a subtle corsa some cars out there give you a lot of options for tuning your car from suspension the tires to the amount of boost you're going to be running to alignment all that kind of stuff and the 886 doesn't really have any of that you know you have two sets of tires you can use street or the semi slicks i think higher pressure and then limited front end alignment you get uh camber you can go get some negative camber and then you have rear tow and that's it and then the last one which is the biggest could be the biggest turn off for some is you'll you're gonna get slammed with fanboy status um, if you're running the 8.6, people are just going to assume you're doing it because you want to be the next tofu delivery boy, but whatever. I don't really care what people think. If you want to call me a fanboy, go ahead. But uh, eventually when I get better and I'm passing your ass in the 8.6 and you're embarrassed about it, that's on you, not me. So that's it. So you guys, that's the first car in the series of For the Toge, the first one we're going to be looking at to see if we want to main the AE86 in the future. The next episode is going to fe feature the Nissan S13, aka the Nissan Silvia, aka the uh, RPS13, aka 240SX with a SR20 in it, whatever you want to call it, uh, depending on where you are. But that is going to be the next one. That is a car that I've owned in real life. I've owned two. 
and we'll dive into that. I'm looking forward to that to see how how that compares to the AE86 on Akina's downhill. And if you guys liked the content and you want to see more, please do help support the channel by subscribing and liking the video below. Comment down below if you think I should be maining the AE86 or what your recommendation is for me for just getting into toge racing and racing sims on a set of Corsa. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much for sticking to the end if you did. And I'll catch you guys on episode two of For the Toge.